Hello, here is a very interesting question from my student. Why caste rule works? Wow, okay. So we take it for granted, the caste rule. Now let's see what it is and why it works. So what basically it is that that's a coordinate plane and what we say is that caste rule is like C, A, S and T. It says in this quadrant cos is positive, all are positive in quadrant 1, in quadrant 2 sine is positive and in quadrant 3 tangent is positive. Okay, So my students are struggling with some problems which I would like to share with you. Here are the problems. Normally we use in fact standard is this is quadrant number 1 and that's quadrant number Two, this is 3 and this is 4 so when my student writes cast rule they will write from actually from quadrant 4 and if I ask them a question in which quadrant is cosine positive the answer is quadrant 1 why cast rule so they think it starts with 1 2 3 and 4 that's a huge mistake right fundamentally wrong well but in North America Cast rule is the most popular rule to remember which cosine function, which trigonometric function is positive in which quadrant. Okay. Our age old rule in India has been all silver T cup. So we started with quadrant 1, all are positive. Silver is for sine, we love T, tangent, quadrant 3, and cup for cosine. So for us, well, the letters are same, but we start from quadrant 1, A, S, T, C, all silver T cup. Well, if that looks familiar and good enough for you, you can remember that as your rule to figure out which trigonometric function is positive in which quadrant. Thing to remember here is that every trigonometric function is positive in at least or exactly in two quadrants. For example, all are positive in quadrant 1. And sine is called positive in 1 and 2. Tangent is positive in 1 and 3. Cosine is positive in quadrant 1 and 4. Okay, that's the first part. The second part is, why does it work? Why does it work? That's a good question. Now, think about it like this. When we are talking about angles, then we have, this is our incident line. And the terminal arm is over here, overlapping the incident, and it starts to move counterclockwise. When it moves counterclockwise, we make positive angles. If you move clockwise, then the angles are negative. Okay, so we'll assume we are going in the positive direction, which is counterclockwise for us. So as we move from here like this, correct. So when we reach some point, then we say the terminal arm is here now. Correct. Now, when the terminal arm is here, we can drop a perpendicular from here and form a right angle triangle. At this position, let us say that the quadrants, coordinates of my points in quadrant 1 are x, y. Okay? Let's say this is my point P and that's my origin O. Okay. Now here, x is horizontal this much of distance right let me call this perpendicular as q and p is my point here okay now that's my triangle the right triangle now in this triangle x is oq and y is pq correct so along the x axis we have x and along or parallel parallel to y axis we will have a y coordinate correct op is what OP can be written as, which is our hypotenuse, right? It can be written as square root of x square plus y square. As you know, square root is always positive, correct? Square root function is always positive. You remember square root function, right? It's kind of like this, right? It is in quadrant 1, always positive. Therefore, OP, the hypotenuse, is always positive. Now, as you know, these ratios... Well, let me write these ratios also 
in our acronym soka tour right this is soka tour is sign s sign is opposite over hypotenuse right and then we have cosine sec soka adjacent over hypotenuse and then we have our tangent function which is opposite over adjacent soka tour now if you look at this function then let's consider in details first about the sine function okay sine function sine is opposite over hypotenuse let's analyze this sine function as our terminal arm rotates full circle okay now as i was saying op is always positive since square root function is always positive correct and x and y could be positive or negative depending on the point P, whether it is in quadrant 1 or quadrant 2 or quadrant 3 or quadrant 4, correct? In quadrant 1, x and y are also positive. So all the three things are positive. Therefore, our ratios, all the three ratios, which are sides of right triangle, will always be positive. And that leads to all as positive in quadrant 1, correct? As P moves to quadrant 2. Let's, let, let's now move to quadrant 2, right? As we move to quadrant 2, what happens to x? So these are our positive values of x, right? And these are our negative values of x, correct? As is approaching this side, we say they are approaching negative infinity. And here we are approaching positive. All these are positive values of x. And all these are negative values. So as soon as I come here, let's say my point here is x1, y1. So at this instance of time, x1 will be negative because it is here, right? So if I make a triangle here, kind of like this, correct? In that case, x value will be negative and y will be positive. So y is going up in quadrant 1 and 2. Do you see that? It's positive. Therefore, in quadrant 1 and 2, sine is positive because sine depends on opposite side, opposite to this angle. Do you see that? Opposite to this angle will always be y value. Do you see that? In this coordinate, this is y and this is x, correct? So, sine is positive in both these coordinates. So, therefore, we get this s positive, right? How about cosine? Cosine will be negative since cosine is adjacent. Adjacent side to the angle is here, x value, right? In general, in our triangle with all this, let me call this as the radius r, okay, for the time being. Then, I can write sine as sine of angle theta as, let's say this angle is theta, right, as y over r. Is it okay? Got it? And cosine will be, of theta will be equals to x over r. And tan theta will be what? What is the opposite side? y over x. Is it okay? So, this is another way of looking into it. And r, oh, yeah, y over x. r is always positive, do you see? Now, let's get back to uh, our point in quadrant 2. So, in quadrant 2, we found that y is positive. In quadrant 1, all are positive. Now, since y is positive, sine is positive. But x is negative. x is negative, y is positive. So, we got positive negative here right positive for y negative for x so in cos x is negative that makes cos negative do you see that so in quadrant 2 cosine is negative how about tan tan is the ratio of y over x y is positive x is negative so different signs will give us negative result perfect therefore only sine is positive here now let's move on to next quadrant and let's say this next quadrant is quadrant 3 so here let's say we make our angle right so angle we are always talking to angle as an acute angle or this whole angle right okay see from this acute angle point of view now what is happening to y value the y value going down negative do you see that now so y has become negative r is always positive therefore sine is negative okay how about x x value is also negative do you see it's still on this side left of y axis so it is negative right left of origin is negative correct so cos is also negative how about tan 
Well, x is negative, but y is also negative. Both x and y are negative. So negative div divided by negative gives us positive. So only tan is positive in coordinate 3 and we get a t here. Do you understand? And let's move further. So when we move further to coordinate 4, and we say, well, let's move on to this. And let's say we have a triangle here now. Okay. And in this triangle, that's my angle we're talking about. How about x value and y value? y is still downward. Do you see y is going down? Right? So, it is pointing towards negative infinity for y, right? So, y is negative and r, you know, is always positive, which makes sine as negative, right? How about cosine? For cosine, x is positive, right? And r is always positive. So, cosine is positive. And how about tan? For tan, y and x. Y is negative, but X is positive. So they have different signs. Therefore, tan theta in this coordinate is negative. And we get a C here. Correct? So basically, we get C, A, S, T starting from coordinate 4. Remember, cast rule. Cast rule says cos is positive here, and this coordinate is not 1. This coordinate is coordinate 4. Okay? Or you can remember this rule with our Indian way of remembering. That is, we love T, right? All silver tea cups. That's a beautiful way of having tea. I hope this will get in your mind forever. Thank you.